everyone, this is Steve Weintraub with Collider, and we're here at the Collider studio at Sundance, which is sponsored by Saratoga Spring Water. Uh, I really appreciate them because Sundance costs a lot of money to be here, and we appreciate our sponsors, and I want to say thank you to them. Uh, I am really happy to be talking to the people behind Cat Person, um, and I'm just going to say congratulations and how much I enjoyed your movie, and I really appreciate you guys coming in. I have a million questions. So, um, but I, I really want to start with probably the most important question up front, and it'll be for you, and I'm sorry, I'm individual. Um, okay. So I really want to know what working on Sky High, how that, that performance helped you with uh, Succession and Cat Person. Okay, well, obviously it did. Because um, as a 16 year old, I knew I was gonna play Robert at some point. Um, no, uh, I got nothing for you, but I'm glad to hear a Sky High reference always. That's By the, by the way, we filmed on a college campus and that was what everybody was excited about. Like it's all true. the kids were sticking their heads out the window of the dorm, like yelling at him for being on Sky High. In yeah. Sky High, remember that? So I uh, totally and and that was like 16 years ago, and those kids are 18. I don't know when, like how they found that movie, but but it really does stick in people's minds. It is the thing outside of Succession that I most recognize for, which is just crazy to me. But uh, yeah, it's crazy to me. It's not Chalet Girl. Yeah, I get that. Chalet Girl, one in 1,000, what, 10,000 people bring it up, and you are that one. You just one. happen to be sitting with two of them. The yeah. <laughs> That's very true. Did you true. see it before the, we shot this movie? I did. I don't think I knew that. Yeah. I was oh, cool. so I worked with Ed, who was oh, your cinematographer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also because it's Chalet Girl, and I Hello. watched it like any self-respecting woman would do. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> it is a good film. It is a good film. Amazing. We Obviously, we agree. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, you, All I'm, right. I'm sure you didn't think this was the way the interview was going to start. <laughs> I was going to say. Well, 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 chalet well, girl. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's no, get into I, it. What's funny, though, on a college campus, I don't think a lot of them are watching Succession. I think they grew up watching Sky High. You know, honestly. Yeah. But uh, anyway, getting into why I get to talk to you guys. Um, so I am curious. Uh, this is obviously a very popular um, story that many, many people have read. And what the can you talk about the challenges of taking something that um, and bringing it to the screen and, and fleshing it out more than what's in the story? Because and I'm, I'm not spoiling anything, but where the short story ends, you know, the, the film continues. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not the, the writer of the screenplay, so I, I'll have to give credit to Michelle in terms of how she imagined expanding the story to sort of be to befit a full movie experience but but one thing that was challenging just even in terms of like actualizing it with with Nick um, was that the story is really from Margot's perspective to the point where Robert is more or less a projection um, you're not ever hearing from Robert you're not ever really inside Robert's internal experience when you're reading the story it's all from her side but when you're on the set with an actor you have to have a 360 view of a person like Nick would say well why am I saying why is Robert saying this and we'd have to figure out the motivations for why Robert is doing and saying the things he's doing and saying so I think it's just um by definition you have to have a more humanistic approach to all of the characters because you're dealing with living breathing actors trying to like embody them uh in ways that are you know e even if he's not always likable we wanted him to always be relatable enough that men watching the movie would feel like there's something in there that they can connect with, learn from, cringe at, recognize. So yeah, I mean, I would say just kind of wanting to be true to what the story did in terms of showing what's problematic about dating culture and men and women and how we interact functionally or not, but then also having to give it more layers, just human layers, because we're real people and I have to see what's on Robert's face too. You know, even if Margot's not noticing it, the camera's gonna notice it, so. Totally. Yeah. I, I hate asking the generic question, but m almost everyone watching this interview will not have seen the movie yet. So can you both sort of talk about who you play and I guess what the film is about? Yeah, you wanna go? There you go. Okay, um, I play Robert, who is um, pursuing Margot, uh, at the local movie theater, Robert's a big film buff. Um, he's there all the time. He finally works up the courage to speak to this girl who he has a crush on. And I guess our journey is, uh, you know, they aspire to be a couple, and it's very messy on the way towards that. And it goes to play extreme places. Um, 
you know, yeah. Yeah, basically touches on the the power dynamics, uh, the miscommunication and the interiority of dating. Um, and I play Margot, and yeah, she works the concession stand, and uh, she's her head's kind of a little bit up in the clouds. Um, and they text back and forth for a while, and then they finally go on a date, and that's all I'm gonna say. Um, yeah. There's so many, what is it like, this is a very, very popular story. And I'm curious, when you told your friends and family that you were involved with this, did a lot of them actually know the material and what was their reaction when they, when you told them who you were playing? The people who, a lot of, some people didn't know it at all, but the people who knew about it were like, oh my God, they're making a movie. And were like, oh my God, you're gonna play Robert. And so, that was you. Um, and so, you know, the people who know this story, I think, love it and it matters so much to them. And I think they want our film to live up to that. And they want us, I mean, the story is so compelling, but also like cinematic. Like when you're reading it, you see all the places, you see all the moments, you can see what's happening on their faces. And I don't know, I think you feel it like, you know, very instinct, you know, very viscerally when you're reading it. So, I don't know, I think people who knew we were gonna make a movie were, you know, who'd read it were stoked, mm -hmm. really excited, yeah. Did you have any friends and family that were like, oh my God? Yeah, I mean, a yeah. friend of mine, yeah, <laughs> like everyone. I mean, a friend of mine actually told me to read the short story. I was late to the party and I hadn't read it when it came out. And uh, yeah, a friend of mine told me to, to read it and uh, because she'd had a similar experience. And then when I told that friend that we were gonna make it into movies, she was like, oh my gosh, do I get credit for that? I was like, ah, uh, yeah. So that, yeah, everyone's excited. I mean, it provokes so much conversation. So, you know, when people find out we're making a movie, they're like, oh my gosh, I hope it provokes the same amount of reaction and conversation. And, and people are interested, you know, how our film like ends and where it goes. Cause you know, short story into a film, there's a lot you've got to kind of add in. Um, yeah, I mean, I was, there was a lot of debate in my group of friends when the story came out in the first place. Um, and reading it, I wasn't immediately sure how it would translate. Like I, I, I knew someone was going to make it into a movie because when you live in LA and you make movies, every everybody, you read a story and you're like, this is gonna be a movie in two years. I don't know what the movie will be, but this will be something. Um, but it was really when I read Michelle's script, which kind of took took some of those internal experiences that Margot has and the fears and projections that she has and made them into externalized kind of um, whether they're flashes of fear that she has or projections or just those, those thriller and suspense elements that are that are some of them psychological for Margot was sort of Michelle's vision for how to adapt this very internal story. I was like, oh, okay, this, this can borrow some genre elements while still having the relatable cringe humor of the story. And hopefully, hopefully all of that makes it feel like bigger than the sum of its parts as, as a movie, not just a direct adaptation. So that was, that was exciting. But yeah, I mean, everybody was familiar with it. It's such a it, it it's such a it's it's that rare relatable short story that kind of turns into ip because it has that name recognition sure. which for a story about dating is not common you know um so yeah it was exciting to think about just the reach it would have even if people are just like how'd they do that and then they watch it and then they have their own thoughts about the movie as a different piece of art you know one of the things i thought the film did such a great job on um is showing the woman's perspective uh in a relationship and because as, as a man i don't I, I thought it's hard to describe this, but you know, I don't see it from the woman's side when I'm, you know, and it, the film does such a great job of showing your character's perspective on who is this guy and just being alone on a street and little things. So could you sort of talk about capturing the, the woman's, you know, hopefully you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, well, we talked about this a lot, just that, and, and one reason that I think Amelia was so perfect for this part is that um, Margot is not, she's in the process of you know coming of age and becoming an adult and trying to figure out how to be an adult and for the first time she's living independently from her family and she's alone at night and she's going back to a dorm where people may or may not notice if she comes back uh, at, at, the, at a specific time. So there's a lot of anxiety that just goes into being a woman of that age or a woman of any age, but in particular when you're first like thrust out of your home in that way. So. But at the same time, we didn't want it to be a story of just a, a woman who's a victim of a big, scary world. And there's something about Margot where the fact that she's a good student, the fact that she's funny, the fact that she's self-aware, the fact that she has 
ego about certain things and she's like a little cocky about certain things, but also insecure about other things. Like there's just a more relatable, I think, way in for women. You're not looking at just this like victim, final girl type girl, nor is she some like bionically strong woman who always knows what to say and like kicks ass all the time. She's kind of just a relatable person who's a combination of strong and and also makes a ton of mistakes you know, e even though she can articulate what she wants probably in every other area of her life, this is the one area where she can't, and that felt really real and nuanced. So, yeah, I don't know if that answered your question, but. No, it does. But yeah. I'm, I'm gonna get specific with some stuff that's in the short story, and uh, you know, I try to, but I, I have to ask, uh, there's a, a big thing in the short story about the bad kiss, and I'm just curious if you guys could talk about filming the bad kiss, and how you wanted to film, and how as a director you wanted to put it on screen. It was really bad. Really, really, really bad. Yeah. Nick? I thought it was a really good kiss. Uh, that's interesting. Hmm. Uh, it, was, it was fun to, to film. I know it was, it's such a weird scene to do, and I think going into that, we all knew that. And we'd done a few scenes before that scene, so we kind of already knew each other, and we, we got on really well. And yeah, we laughed into each other's mouths, and it was from that moment I knew that we would be friends for life. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, that's a very bonding thing to literally laugh into a mouth. That was um, one of the most fun nights we were filming, yeah. especially yeah. because we were filming in on the streets of Jersey City, I think, yeah. and people were driving by. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a really long makeout. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think you know it was important that it be extremely aggressive, um, like, like, because you know what he how you kiss is how you sleep together sometimes they say you know and it's like and she says too like it's probably going to be how it would be in bed like mauling and um and so i think it was important to like go for it and i mean what you see in the movie i f feels like 10 like we went to 10 yeah. you know i'm yeah. it's like she, my face has engorged her face <laughs> And it's fro you know, she's frozen. I, your look at the end when <laughs> like it's what? done is yeah. just like with, with the slap it's on the thing. Yeah, I just can't wait. Um so, you know, and he doesn't want to stop either. It's like he wants to keep going, like you know. Anyway, I could talk about it because it is really interesting and and it is an important part of it. He thinks he it's like the first moment where he thinks he's like killing it, you know? Later, you'll see them at the house, and he thinks he's he's doing a great job there as well. But but with the kiss, he's like, I just showed her I can kiss. Um, so it was an important thing to to get right. I feel like Robert gets more confident after he sees Margot cry, which is really interesting. Yeah. You know, it kind of you kind of finally see him be himself and not have this kind of like guard up. But then you're like, put that guard back up slightly because that was so much. Yeah, I think that, I mean, yeah, that's very true. It feels like, well, what we talked about a lot just in terms of like the psychology of both of those characters and that date leading up to that was really um, the idea that they're both kind of circling each other and Robert is not sure that he's on safe ground with her. Like at any moment, he's like, oh, she didn't like the movie. She she sent this text and maybe she didn't mean this text. And so he's got his own like swirling insecurities about the whole thing. and. And the way that he handles that is sort of to push her away just preemptively before he can get hurt. So I think mm -hmm. in, I mean, it's not a spoiler to say just because it's the dynamic that kind of pervades the whole movie, but, but in that moment where she's more vulnerable and she feels younger and weaker in a way, he can then be the man in a way that he hasn't felt completely confident in being. So I think totally. he almost becomes like an amplified version of that. And that totally. kiss is like a good... Totally, yeah. Expression it's like, of that, you know. It's yeah. that thing where you feel like someone, the, the other person has the higher ground. Like you're like, oh, I, you know, they have the power. But I don't know if I like the term power dynamic. It's like, it's like you just like them more than they might like you. It's like, you know what I mean? It's but like, the fa yeah, it's, and it also, is a power yeah. dynamic, but it's like, no, it is. I just want, I think I want them to want me more than they, you know, it's just so. So when he has an opportunity to be like, oh. I'll show you, you know, or, or, you know, oh, you're vulnerable. Well, I, maybe I'm not vocalizing it as well as you just did, but, but, no, but I, I, I it what, is exactly. I, I know what you mean. It's like, it's also like, it's, verbalizing the, it, yeah. it's the inverse. It's the inverse of what Margot feels in moments where she's imagining that Robert is insecure and talking to his 
therapist, but not to give a spoiler, but there's a moment where she's she's not connecting with Robert, but she kind of spirals out into a, a fantasy of Robert confessing his insecurities about how inadequate he feels with her to his therapist. And then she's like, oh, he just feels inadequate. That's why he's being kind of an asshole right now. Now I like him more because poor Robert. Like she, she goes through this whole narrative in her mind that may or may not be accurate to what he is feeling. But in that moment, she feels a little bit of the power. So she's able to give him another chance. So it's kind of yeah. the two of them are just doing so much projecting yeah, and not yeah. enough asking. Strategizing. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And strategizing. So, yeah. yeah. I, uh, and I, I asked you off, off before we started if I could ask about this, but I think one of the, the best things in the film is how you portrayed, um, I'm going to be specific, uh, a sex scene and showing your character's perspective and what's going on, how the scene is filmed in real time. And like there's a sense of danger and there's everything about it I thought was so well done. And I'm just curious if you, the two of you could talk about as actors filming a scene like that, that really depicts such an honest and vulnerable moment and everything that's going on and also how you wanted to capture it as a director. I mean, I, I had total and utter trust with Susanna as a director and as a person and I loved um, her way of approaching the scene and um, she uh, did a, so obviously we had storyboards and I remember you sent them to us before and I could kind of look through them and, and suddenly the scene became alive in my head and then we all sat down and we talked in depth about the scene with Nick um, and, uh, and the intimacy coordinator and it kind of just allowed us to talk everything out you know, each picture, each step. So it meant that on the day, we could kind of have freedom. Everyone knew what was gonna happen. We knew what was, you know, what we were going to do. But at the same time, we all trusted each other and we knew that if anyone was uncomfortable at any moment, we could voice that. And uh, I'm glad that Nick and I get on really well because, um, yeah, I can't imagine doing that scene with anyone else. It w we managed to make a, you know, tough scene fun. And yeah, I, I, there wasn't a moment where I was uncomfortable or anything. Yeah, I feel it's the same way. It's like you gave us exactly what it was going to be and you asked us, us if it's okay, everything you're seeing there. And then we spoke to the in intimacy coordinator who's kind of like a mediator to be like, are you okay? What's your, what are your, you know, I think she even took us aside and we're like, you know, it was like, what are your limits? What are your boundaries? What are you not okay with? Same with me. You know, she, she pulled both of us aside. And I think, you know, Luckily, because I think the scene benefits from it, like both of us were like, let's go, yeah. you know, let's do it all. Let's make it like as full as it can be and not hold back. Um, not to say that, you know, um, if so, you know, if she wanted to do less, fine. The scene was great. Like the writing is great what it is, but choreographing it became fun. It's like, how do we, you know, s start here? And then what position does he think makes him like show that he's good at sex and then you know and like you know how to, how does he do it all it was fun to figure out okay and then he i mean i guess i won't go into each <laughs> part of it go see the movie if you want to see how it progresses but um but i would say it's like the best case scenario in terms of working on a scene that's super vulnerable and i've never done a scene like that i don't think you've ever done a no, scene like that and i've never seen a sex scene that long except for in the movie the room um where there are several uh and they're all terrible um but but yeah i think i think it was yeah i think we we had fun once we got all the logistical yeah the logistics permission all that stuff out of the way and it was clear you know to as go you forward. said i mean that scene benefits on also not like one of the scenes I banged my head on the headboard and it wasn't planned. And I think, you know, we were mm. both game. Same with yeah. some of the other stuff in the third act. You know, we were both like, let's go. You know, I, we had a similar way of working, which was nice. Yeah. Because you, and and uh, if you could talk a little bit about how you wanted to film that scene. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, I think that I'm a meticulous planner in general. So even when it came to this scene, especially when it came to this scene, it was, you know, it was, it was a matter of choreographing the whole thing out like a ballet basically like okay what is every move that they're making but at the same time what are we not seeing and sometimes just people's imagination and projecting their own memories and experiences of their own encounters i knew would be more vivid than showing something very graphic not that we would have anyway but so it was sort of like okay if we kind of know enough to know what's going on beyond the frames of the camera um that will be more evocative for people. So it was sort of just like, we knew every second what was going on, whether or not we were seeing it all. 
and then we we filmed it in such a way where I think people just have to be immersed in like her experience of it. And there's not a moment where they can like take a step back and watch some sort of a romantic looking wide shot that's going to fit into any other yeah. romantic story. Like it, it can only be the sex scene in this movie because you're not actually seeing anything that's, you know, erotic. You're just sort of seeing the nuts and bolts of it from her side. Um, but yet you're kind of stuck in this encounter from start to finish in real time, you know? Um, real fast, because I'm, I'm out of time. I, yeah. I just want to do a quick individual question. Uh, you guys were, made another movie together yeah, in yeah. Uh, Winter. Yeah. And I'm just curious if you could talk just brief, because I got to wrap, but just yeah. briefly, what can you tell people about it? And obviously, as a fan of some show on HBO, uh, I am curious what it's been like filming the new season. And um, are you, what are you excited for? You guys go. You guys talk winner. Amelia and I just wrapped another movie together. We we're codependent, and we're just going to keep doing this forever. Um, uh, yeah, it's a it is a coming of age story that is also a biopic of reality winner, the whistleblower. So it's a twenty something girl grew up in Texas, went on to become a crypto linguist, and then ended up um, leaking a document and and being incarcerated for years. So Amelia trained and bulked up and ate protein shakes every day, and it completely transformed. Um, anyway, so yeah, that was amazing. She's got an incredible range. But, I mean, I'm n I haven't looked at a weight since, and I haven't touched a weight since, and I don't think I will ever touch a weight ever again. No, I'm joking, it was a lot of fun. I'm glad that Susanna trusted me with that film. I, I'm brunette and, and kind of slim, so uh, it was kind of a project that was quite far away from me, and the character was very different from me, but I absolutely loved it, and I loved meeting reality and talking to her in depth. We, we text all the time, even now, and yeah, it was an amazing project to be a part of. I was just trying to get Nick in, in a scene. I just wanted him to be in it somehow. We just didn't work pr out. Prison guard. Yeah, prison yeah. guard or, yeah, NSA worker. Yeah, I would have been down. <laughs> uh, just didn't get the call, so I was ready. I knew you guys were filming, uh, so next time. Next time you guys do something, just please include me. Um, uh, Succession is great. Uh, oh, is it's it called Succession? Succession, yeah, yeah, that's the name for the fourth season. We'll do, yeah, we're gonna keep it the same. Uh, it's just great. It's just a blast, you know. Um, I don't know. There's, there's. We just have such a great rhythm together. The writing is excellent. It's just uh, the season is next level. It's like it's an incredible. I'm very, very impressed every time we get a script. I mean, I always have been, but like this season, they continue to be. I'm like, Jesus Christ, this is like unbelievable. So it continues to be like a total joy to make. And you're back on set tomorrow. Back on set tomorrow. On yeah. that note, yeah. uh, thank you both, all, all both. Thank all three of you for coming in. <laughs> and um, uh, seriously, congrats on being part of Sundance. And uh, seriously, have a great day. Thank, thank you. you. So much.